Hi, my name is Chris Berry, and I am a Principal Technical Instructor here at Okta. Uh, I hold a number of certifications at Okta, uh, including the Certified Developer. That's a new certification that we recently offered last year. Uh, and I also have the Professional, the Administrator, and the Certified Consultant Certification. Uh, I teach a number of courses here at Okta. Our Customer Identity for Developers, which is a three-day class, uh, which is all about using Okta's APIs for customer identity use cases. Uh, and then also single sign-on with OpenID Connect, API Access with OAuth, Automated Lifecycle Management with Skim, uh, and then a number of our administrator-oriented courses. Uh, I've been here for over five years now, and I teach both our workshops publicly, uh, so ones that uh, uh, multiple people from different organizations can enroll in, uh, or uh, I also teach private workshops where I visit a specific customer and really focus on their topics. So let's talk about the uh, OAuth course. Uh, a lot of organizations have older, you know, fortress-based architectures. The idea is you have a corporate set of firewalls that uh, uh, define an area of your network where all your business applications are. And so what this course is about is a component, which is uh, securing your APIs uh, and moving beyond that kind of uh, architecture to a zero trust environment. Uh, and so when you think about these different types of things which have evolved over the past uh, 10 years, cloud-based applications, software as a service, uh, people accessing applications which are uh, from uh, mobile devices, so they're no longer on that corporate network, or working from home, even if they are using a laptop. Uh, this is all about enabling zero trust for those common situations that exist today. And what we, what we show you how to do with this course is to secure your APIs using the OAuth specification. Think of it as applying internet grade security to the APIs on your own network, the APIs that you built. Uh, what we do is we show you how to work with access tokens. Uh, the idea is an access token is a token which provides you scoped permissions uh, to your end users. It could also actually be used for machine to machine situations uh, so that uh, they're able to get the permissions they need uh, when they access those APIs uh, and uh, it's the right amount of access for the, the right people. We also show you how to protect those REST APIs. So there's kind of two components to this. Uh, there's basically the component of requesting the access tokens uh, and using them and then the other component is going into those APIs, updating those APIs so that access is limited two situations where the uh, right token uh, being validated with the right permissions is the only scenario where those APIs will return results. I'd now like to take a more detailed uh, look or to show you what we do in the API Access Management with OAuth course. Uh, we go into an application that utilizes a backend API and we make some modifications with that client application and we also make some modifications with the API itself to require that any uh, client accessing that API has a, uh, a bearer token, a OAuth access token in order to uh, be able to, to call it. Uh, so taking a look here, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to point out that uh, I have a client application uh, and it has this button which allows you to get these premium promotions and in order to get these what we're going to do is a back-end call to, let me just show you here, it's basically our API is running on port 5000. And let me uh, just do the following uh, promos and then slash premium, like so. Uh, now, currently, I'm unable to access this. And the reason I'm getting back a 401 is that I've already gone through the steps 
of uh, protecting this endpoint. We have another endpoint just to show you what would have happened. This one is a public non-protected site. Uh, so let me just call this one. Uh, in this case, here's the JSON that we get back uh, when we call a unprotected endpoint. Um, but the, the idea here is that the one that is the, the premium uh, endpoint, we've locked that down. What we do in class is we use a, an SDK provided by Okta, which is a JSON web token verifier. Its purpose is to uh, validate any requests that come to that API to make sure that they have a valid token, a valid uh, access token, uh, which is a form of uh, a JSON web token. Now jumping back to here, let me show you, uh, you know, before we, we grant a user access to this API with the, the uh, appropriate level of permissions, when we click on this, we're gonna get back that HP 401. So over on the API side, just so you know, I have two, basically two windows running here. Uh, one represents the client application, that's the one in green, uh, and then the other one represents the API endpoint, and this is the one that returns the results of the requests to the API. So when I go in here, and in this case, uh, the user uh, in my demo does not have access to this API, when I, let me first fetch the token, so one of the things that we do in OAuth is we fetch the tokens from Okta, uh, and so just to show you here, uh, in my little demo, the tokens currently do not exist. When I click on premium promos, what's going to happen is I'm, I'm already logged into Okta, so I already have a valid session with Okta. So my application using single sign-on is simply going to fetch and retrieve the tokens. And so in the Chrome DevTools, I can actually take a look at these. And so now I have an access token, but it's limited to the uh, OpenID Connect permissions, which are called scopes, and this is not going to succeed uh, when I call the API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on uh, get our premium promos, and what should happen if I go here to my network response is that in making that request, the response is a 401, uh, and it's basically saying, all right, you know, this promos premium is locked down, and the reason is that I do not have the proper set of permissions. What we show you how to do is to set this up. So to set up your application and your, your, your custom authorization server, uh, you, you basically configure the uh, access policies for granting tokens in Okta. Uh, in my case, uh, I have a couple of groups here, and so I have one called Promos Users, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign my current user to the Promos users group. What this is going to do is now when I go back and I uh, delete the tokens, so I'm going to delete the existing tokens and then click on Premium Promos, get fresh tokens. Uh, and now what's going to happen, let me just show you the, the new token that I got. The new token now has a... Uh, uh, a, a permission called promos read. And what this gives me the ability to do now, let me highlight my network tab. Uh, so when I click on get premium promos, what this is now gonna do is it's the, the call is gonna succeed. Uh, and so I get back my 200 indicating that this, uh, you know, uh, here's my promotional data, if you will, uh, upon this succeeding. Uh, the uh, uh, so what we've done is uh, we've locked down our API. It is now protected and requires a valid access token. Uh, but one of, the, one of the additional things that we get into in the class is uh, essentially if I want to read promos, uh, I, I assigned my user uh, to that promos users group and they, they gain this permission right here, which is promos read. We also show you how you can use groups in Okta. It can be uh, Okta managed groups. It could be AD 
manage groups. So you could have groups coming from you know, some sort of uh, external source. If I go in here, let me just show you, uh, this is all group driven in terms of the permissions. So if I go in and I update this group so that now my user is a member of the promos admins, what's gonna happen is when I re-request the token, it's going to be dynamic and it's now going to return me an access token uh, that has additional permissions. So in this case, because this user is a member of the admin group, uh, they can uh, perform read, create, and delete operations on the or uh, with the endpoint APIs. Uh, so with Okta, you, you basically have a powerful uh, uh, tool. Powerful, it's a, technically it's an authorization server. Uh, and when you combine that with our other features in Okta and you have a strategy where authorization logic is built around group membership, what we're able to do is we're able to uh, dynamically uh, uh, issue these tokens for these applications based on who you are and what you're authorized to do. And that then gives you the ability to do different things with the different API endpoints. In my first example, it was you could only read. Uh, in this example, because we made of an admin, they could read, uh, create, and delete. So I'd uh, love to see you in uh, our uh, API access management with OAuth class, where we will show you uh, how to uh, uh, update the client application, we're going to show you how to lock down the API uh, so that we're protecting it with our JWT verifier library and how to make it essentially dynamic or adaptive uh, so that your administrators down the road can determine who has access to what and then your flexible application can dynamically uh, you know, grant that or provide that user with the appropriate level of authorization logic. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in class someday. We have a lot of great courses for developers. Uh, the customer identity for developers, the single sign-on with OpenID Connect and uh, API access with OAuth. OAuth, and we'd love to see you in class. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.